So uh, my good friend Ming Wang to talk to you uh, about his experience with the eye trace, and uh, let, let's get started. Thank you, Ray. You know, we um, uh, one of the questions I hear almost all that you know people who don't have uh, these devices and say, why should I get another yet another topography? And uh, when I think about it, you know, we have all devices that have a specific use. Each device can do one particular thing really well. And that justifies having that. Um, you know, we have A scan, you know, for opaque cataracts to get good axial length. We have A scan, B scan for intraocular pathology. You have our master of optical, not to dense lenses for axial length. And uh, you have Atlas, a procedural topography with yet among the best in coverage determination because there's a direct measure parameter. And you have Pentagon, which is a tomography topography, which is probably one of the uh, standard in terms of posterior and cornea pachymetry and posterior progression. So where, the, where is the eye trace? You know, most of us have, so I will be uh, speaking to choir, but lots of times we get questions from people, why should I get an yet another topography? So the key is, I mean, many of the features you heard today, I think, have great potential to develop. Uh, um, what I'm most interested in is this angle offer, for example, to dif differentiate before multifocal implantation if this is going to be a successful multifocal candidate. And there are many other features. But today, I'm just going to focus on mainly on uh, the problem of corneal lens. As you know, one the big picture of anterior segment surgeries now is we have unprecedented ability to intervene both at the cornea and the lens. It used to be you only touch the lens when you have cataracts, but today refractive lens exchange for dysfunctional lens is getting more and more popular. So we feel more comfortable intervening even lens level electively. So now it becomes more important for us to differentiate where the problem is since we have the capability intervening at the level of cornea and the lens. So today I'm just going to focus on one, I believe, the most prominent feature of eye trace. And that's just like you have a scan for dense cataract, you've got to get a uh, axial length. Our master will know our work. For problem of trying to differentiate between lens and cornea, you've got to have eye trace. And so it's learning the new features of this device to help improve our decision making. And uh, I have no financial interest. And uh, these are our staff, and as you trace, see she was here, and we worked together many years, still working together on many topography textbooks. And uh, I've had a long history, I had the prototype of ones, the original ones that long time ago as I watched the whole history of the development technology. And uh, uh, the currently that you have hardware, software, many of you are familiar with all these devices, we have seen many examples. So, uh, the software is inter easy to interpret, easy exam, and DLI is, uh, is clearly uh, expressed, and you have Tori planning um, the other devices. We made some suggestions to Ray to continue to improve. For example, one of the things I would like to see, and uh, I'll talk about your wish list, one of the things I'd like to see is, you know, there's a fovea, perifovea, a weighted visual functional uh, statistical weight. You know, you look at the topography, you look at the, uh, you know, uh, bow tie, but not all topog topographic points is as important, as important as for vision. Vision is only fovea or perifovea. So I'd like to superpose a fovea uh, map onto these to, to really get us functional visual consequence of these topographies. And uh, so, um, oh, by the way, I have topo course that I always teach at uh, Aspers this coming Tuesday and talk about this. We probably have about a dozen or so more topographies, and yet we still get the uh, tracing on top of that. As you know, the wavefront relate to aberrations, and uh, sometimes you have double vision, more classically caused by coma. You have halo, glare, classically caused by spherical aberration and all uh, his stubbers uh, and uh, caused by trefoid. And uh, so it's important now since we have the ability to intervene at the cornea or at the lens, so we need to differentiate where those aberrations are, locate the aberration in relationship to the clinical symptomatology. So just because you have coma, how many sharks tell you you have coma in the total eye wavefront, 
it's now time in our current state of technology now in 2016 is to push the next step. Is where is that? Wavefront is wonderful, but Wavefront is a z-axis collapsed shot in x, y plane. It does not tell you where along z-axis, visual axis, where there's aberration on cornea on the lens. So um, could be a corneal situation with descent aberration, keratoconus asymmetric, um, and it could be a tilted IOL in the lens space. And all these both can cause coma. And uh, so wave front coming shots, wave scan is insensitive. Insensitive tell us where along the visual axis, the axis, where the aberration comes from. A device like Clear Tracy can. Uh, so if you even if you detect uh, you know so the specular aberration, night vision problems, you would like to know where along the axis. Again, it could be corneal issues due to small ablation zone of the hyaluronic LASIK some years ago, or it could be uh, lens problems, anticonus or DRS. And when you have trefoil, which again the generalized aberration or blurriness of patients, and it could be on the um, corneal level such as previous RK surgery causing significant irregular astigmatism or could be decentered rexis on lens level. So uh, chain analysis was mentioned many times so I'm going to spend just a um, few minutes to talk about <coughs> uh, most of you are very familiar with but I think it's always help to review for ourselves a little bit about now this little square down here this rectangular is everything about the cornea and this the rectangle up there is everything about the whole eye and over there without the square is the internal subtraction so su subtraction math uh, mathematics is by far the most advanced and most clinically tested by the eye trace system and so then we start with the cornea and we're very familiar with the cornea topography and these are cornea aberrations ranked by Zernikis and the plus being the positive wavefront arrive ahead of time and blue being the negative wavefront lag behind the plane wave and uh, over here again is within the cornea so we got all different parameters for example the refractive power at the center three millimeters again you got this uh, two meridians and subtraction give you astigmatism and you have the R, uh, effective RP with some consideration of more central rays being more important, which is visual function is important, and uh, the central radius, etc. So everything is here is about, and the uh, IS parameter is important in the uh, character components detection, which corresponding to the similar point, superior inferior 3 millimeter subtraction of Ks to indicate FKC. So when you go up there, you look at the, where the uh, total I, of course, these are total aberration, Again, these two, nature, God is pretty smart. He got his mathematics reasonably well. So he can cancel the cornea and the lens. So total eye tends to be sometimes due to beneficial cancellation cornea lens result in, in the, and that's why it's important in the lens. Now we intervene. Uh, now I have the ability to get lens. In some situation, we have to recognize uh, that by removing the lens, you're removing the naturally building cancellations by nature between cornea and the lens. And over here is part of the lens, uh, the total eye again. And uh, the color refraction is important. They tell you the sample size, the pupil size, and limbus measurements. And also refreshing color green means this high or, uh, uh, highly aberrated eye. And green will be the best. And different uh, diameters within which refraction is obtained, obviously, larger the diameter, a little bit more myopic. And then you have how the aberration uh, total, how the total eye. And of course, 0.2 micron being our threshold, anything above that. And then you have within that total high order aberration of cone, specular aberration, trefoil, through a rooming square summation mathematics. And on angle alpha, uh, I'm really looking at this number, and probably 300 micron is maybe the threshold above which we should begin to look at. Um, the, I really believe, I don't believe angle uh, kappa is really that important for multifocal. It is not the pupil center uh, with respect to uh, the visual axis important. It's the back center with respect to visual axis more important for multifocals. So I just spent a couple of minutes just going through the basics of the um, eye trace. And finally, those uh, have colors and basically these are the aberration name itself will color red mean that particular aberration is high, etc. So, uh, 
the key, again, my focus is separating cornea of the lens, from the lens because now we have the ability. So eye trees present the only objective indicator of the functional vision uh, offered by the lens through the DRS index and document of the, as you know, the 10 is really good and the 1 or 0 is really bad and the summation total, we know that. And of course, you have the cornea tobacco replicated here and you have also the opacity opacity, um, blue is good, white is bad, you know, and, and uh, this is a scale in terms of um, overall reference, but the grade of the opacity is 0 to 5. And um, then you have refreshing here um, as a function of these aberrations. So this gives you a very nice tool differentiating lens from the cornea. So we're going to go through three specific cases to see how this, um, now we do have the capability of intervening both at the cornea and the lens position and how do we help, and I always like to get a device that looking at differentiating features, meaning that only that machine can do that no other machine can do as good. It's not just a supplement can do a little bit better or as well, me too, but looking at features that uniquely can be uh, obtain information by this device and affects actual clinical management. So this is a 40-year-old male with monocular appropriate right eye. LASIK both eyes many years ago. OK vision right eye initially has a uh, progressive monocular double vision in this right eye for the past two or three years. He was actually referred by a cataract surgeon who doesn't deal with cornea as much so it's, it, it, the surgeon said, well, there's no lens opacity. Lens is OK, no opacity. And uh, maybe it's cornea, but then the surgeon does uh, complete workup. RGP does not reduce monocular dipropia. So what well, maybe the cornea is not, uh, because you suspect cornea being irregular, having LASIK history. But clearly, the best correct vision is reduced 2070. And uh, our, in our exam, we had the, the one more thing, the, the pinhole, and which does dramatic results. So here's an interesting case where that LASIK seems to be successful initially, but does have monocular dipropia, but yet does not seem to come from the cornea. Uh, but interestingly, that even though RGB does not improve, reduce the monocular dipropia, pinhole does improve situation. So as you expect, because patient was happy with post LASIK vision, LASIK, you know, cornea topography is pretty regular, so that's okay. And we use Atlas, we use a Pantacan, just as a comparison to basically shows pretty regular cornea. And so again, we're sitting here, we find out that there's an increased spherical aberration in internal optics, increased spherical aberration in internal opti optics, and there's a myopic shift, as you see over here. And as you know, myopic shift is a precursor of visual opacity carrot. So in this case, there seems to be that, well, you know, cornea is pretty regular, and uh, that's why RGP did not improve. But no opacity, so it may not be carrot, but yet patient has reduced spectacle best correct vision. And uh, then you look at, um, uh, you know, the, the image simulation display, you find what well, in, indeed is internal problem. So cornea shows minimal aberration. <coughs> Internal optics show reduced uh, this, uh, the functional lens index, but clear lens. Again, this is why the original camera student referred in and said, well, I don't see any problem, I don't see carrot. But this device picked up in terms of aberration. There's no obvious opacity, but it aberrated enough to reduce best spectacle correct vision. So basically, this is the case of 40-year-old post-LASIK Happy with initial post-lasic vision, but monocular dipropia in a few years, RGB does not reduce the appropriate, uh, pinhole does reduce, uh, resolve the problem. Interesting is how the aberration does have this feature that even RGB does not improve, you know, for, if it's not the cornea problem, that it does improve situation is due to even internal optical aberration. So lens grade out of 5 is 5.5, it's pretty clear lens. So this is an aberrated lens. And, um, so patient had the lens surgery, was very happy. In the second case, again, along the theme today, cornea or lens. 67-year-old male, uncorrect vision 2050, uh, 
2030, best car division 2050, so, you know, there's a loss of best car division. Now, blue division, difficult driving at night, halo after LASIK 14 years ago. And there's some history of astrophysical surgery right now, as a child. History of high hyperopic LASIK, plus six, you know, 14 years ago. We no longer do that, we do probably do plus three, plus four, but also enhancement. So, as a character refracting a lens surgeon, we look at this number, we say, wow, this point, this cornea got to be some aberration there. And uh, with a plus six laser treatment many years ago. But now you have best corrective vision loss, patients unhappy with vision. So let's analyze, is that the cornea or is the lens? So you look at the map and you see, well, internal optics does have increased coma trephoid. So basically it's consistent with Cadillac, it's the best corrective vision loss. And uh, Cornea demonstrate increased coma spherical vibration, which is consistent with a high hyperopic LASIK history. So you see on the cornea plane significant amount of aberration and some internal aberration, and the total aberration is pretty bad. And uh, so you look at the image display again, so you see everybody's bad. Cornea is bad, put plus six LASIK. Lens is also 2.81 is not good, and total is very bad. And this is a hyperopic laser, even inferior, slightly decentered. Now, lens is it's not good, but opacity is not that bad. Only the bad opacity are building the visual axis in the middle. The rest of the lens is reasonably clear. So, what we are getting from the eye trace is increased aberration of the cornea greater than that, that of the lens. Now, this is important. If you look at the cornea, you go to the lens, you say, you know, both are bad, but this is the worst. So, the cornea problem is bigger than the lens problem. So why is that important in a patient that you're basically looking at the cataract surgery is that the cataract is a problem but the vision after cataract surgery may be still limited by the cornea with a plus six hyperoblastic history. So basically what we told the patient is that you are going to have improved vision in a wicked patient of 50-60% improvement expectation lower a little bit and you're going to be better but you know how it is in the patient sometimes in my neighborhood had carousel, you're so happy with vision. So they're gonna be unhappy. So this scan, I traced, give us a tool that we went ahead with carousel surgery, removed the opacified, you know, somewhat opacified, but very aberrated lens, but tell the patient ahead of time, you know what, you're not gonna have significant dramatic improvement in vision, will be some improvement, 50, 60%, rather than 80, 90% we typically people expect out of carousel surgery these days. And patient's very happy. So what this actually helps us is prognostically help us analyze the problem, set the right expectation to the patient, and we deliver it as we promised. Last case, again, cornea versus lens. 55 year blur vision right hours and had multiple, multiple character refractive procedures, enhancements. So we basically sit there and say, mm, all right, this is a patient who's gonna get some lens aging now. Should we do more refractive? It is okay, you know, in the appropriate patient to, if a cornea is still reasonably regular, to do more refractive enhancement. You know, and best corrective vision is 20-30. So blur vision, focus on the right eye, multiple. The so question is, should we do more character refractive enhancement? So you look at the eye trace again. Again, first of all, it's a red tracy refraction, and that tells you, once again, as we just reviewed, you're gonna be careful. Total eye, this box is total eye, is aberrated. Increase the stimulus of the internal optics, we notice that, internal optics, and also increase the stimulus and coma on the cornea because multiple character refractive um, enhancements. So again, you're sitting at a situation where looks like you got a cornea problem and internal problem as both as a problem. You know, life is always like, never is 100% or 0%, it's always somewhere in the middle. And so then you look at this map as in contrast to the first case where the aberration of the uh, cornea versus internal cornea was a bigger problem. In this particular case, both are having some problems, but the bigger problem of cornea and the lens is the lens. And uh, despite the fact that you know, opacity grade is still low, 1.5 on a scale of 5, but the aberration is the main problem. So, because of that, we realized that, you know, if you face this, you can conceivably con continue to do another enhancement because it's not too irregular, character refractive enhancement, but it's not going to help too much of the problem because if you compare the two, maybe two-thirds of the problem is the lens, one-third is the cornea. 
So tell us, you know, clinically, do not do any more character refract enhancements. You're going to focus on one third of the problem. Go ahead and remove the lens, refract the lens exchange, not in a cataract, but the aberrated elective procedure, and patients are very happy because we're able to recognize um, the main problem. So in summary, as I said, today we live in a time where we do have the capacity to not only diagnose, but also surgically intervene along the Z visual axis, either at the cornea or the lens. And the wavefront device, how many shacks, all these, that is wonderful, it gives us lots of information, but the problem is that the Z axis collapsed the map. This XY plane has no information where, along the visual axis, where the aberration comes from. Prior to all the technology development, femtosecond laser make, uh, you know, we are, we are doing about 15% of our lens surgeries now are RLEs. We published the most recent textbook on RLE recently. So I think RLE is rising, so we became more comfortable intervening electively on the lens level. So we need a better tool when surgical tool is arriving to intervene at lens level electively. And of course, we can do corny electively, we've been doing it for a long time. We need a device who basically can tell you where to go. So just think about, uh, I, I drew a cartoon one time, the eye trace is basically the guy sitting there, the crossroad, lens or cornea. So that's, I think, is going to be the biggest help, in my personal opinion, in terms of clinicians, in terms of managing patients with a rising surgical capability and di uh, diagnostically as well for intervening both at cornea or lens. Ideal goal is intervene the problem at the, where the aberration is along the z-axis. We all have this classical problem, someone who, you know, 30 years old with astigmatism, and you find most of the stigmas in the lens. Do you do LASIK? Let me ask you, do you do LASIK? 30 years or 35 years old, and uh, two thirds of the stigmas in the lens. Are you gonna do LASIK on the cornea? Well, probably for most of us, it's you know, one, I just, you know, based on refraction, that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, topography, all, all it's gonna give me information is whether it's uh, keratoconus or not. As long as topography tells me there's no keratoconus, I'm gonna ignore the topography. I'm gonna, based on refraction, right? But the problem is you may generate good vision, but the, because the problem is in this case is the lens, and you do basically maybe short-lived benefits. So I think with the surgical and diagnostic and surgical intervention that can arise today, 2016, we can diagnose and intervene either the lens or the cornea. Time has arrived to intervene at the aberration along the z-axis where the aberration comes from. If it's a lens problem, fix the lens. If it's the problem, cornea problem, fix the cornea. So I think along this ushering a new era of character refractive and character, uh, refractive lens surgery, and I think eye trace become an indispensable device in this ushering of a new era of anterior segment surgery, what I call the fifth waves. We got, you know, uh, RK, fifth LASIK, uh, uh, prim, uh, prim, uh, RK, LASIK, FACO, premium lenses, all four waves, this is number five. So, all right, so summary of these cases, as I demonstrated in these three cases, is clinically indispensable and very important to recognize, to help us recognize where should we intervene, in the lens or the cornea. In the case one, it's a 40 year with monocular depropriate post LASIK, regular cornea, happy with post LASIK patient, clear lens. The surgeon just referring to, well, I don't know, I mean, it's a clear lens, but the aberrated lens. In this case, both are a problem a little bit, but most of the problem is the lens, you remove the lens. The second case, you got a 67 year old older patient with blurry vision, reduced best correct vision, and you do have irregular cornea. So you're looking at say, what, what should we do? Well, in this case, we still remove the camera because we do best correct vision, but at the same time, because the cornea were able to image at the same time, we set expectation correctly. So patients are actually happy after care surgery while they're being unrealistic about his vision because he has started with some irregular cornea to begin with, a plus six LASIK years ago. Number three, 55 year blurry vision, right eye, lots of character refractive procedures. We're sitting there, should we do more character refractive surgery? This is a very practical, common encounter problem. So I think this device tells us that yes, you have some irregular cornea due to multiple character refractive procedure and you have lens, but, and the clear lens though, but it's an aberrated lens, so do an elective, not care elective artery that solve the problem. So I think just like you have a scan to use for opacified care to measure axial lens, 
RO method for transparent, somewhat transparent the cataract to measure the axial length. Atlas, one of the best ISIS, one of the best uh, procedural topographies to measure point of curvature. Pentagon, tomography, topography to measure cross section and posterior surface. I think eye trace, its unique differentiation will be, tells you, is the cornea or the lens.